Words, words, words. I could spend so many of them here in this light preamble. Perhaps some goofs, some japes, some gags. Those are good words. But we're not about that here. We're about getting right into it and what it is are words. Many different kinds of words and three games that use them in interesting ways. That's right, this is the Shut Up and Sit Down Word Game Special, if you want to call it that. Or we can just call it Three Good Word Games, or Three Word Games You Need to Play. I haven't really decided on a title just, just yet. So what's first up behind the curtain? Paperback Adventures has an elevator pitch that is something of a pheromonal blast to the brains of most board gamers. What if Slay the Spire and Scrabble got themselves into bed and made a fiddly yet nuanced baby? And if that rhetoricism didn't quite make sense, I'll just spell it out for you. This game is like if Slay the Spire and Scrabble, D-I-D and S-E-F. <laughs> To get some negative admin out the way here, the biggest problems with Paperback Adventures are that it has a slightly odd distribution model, requiring a base set and a character box to function as a game, its components are whack, with these little stat tracks not just quite... And on top of that, this rulebook stinks about as bad as day three of a board game convention. Bloody hell. See, the thing is, I was underwhelmed by the production on this thing, but I was blown away by the design. Here's how it works. This is a mostly solo deck building game in which your goal is to reach the end of three levels, with each level proposing a set of baddies you need to best, one lackey and one boss per stage. First up, we're fighting the pesky suitor who has a plump and hearty health bar of just five points. And in this game, we're playing as Ex Machina, a robot who spells, not magic spells, word spells, which mostly make punches, don't ask. What we're going to do at the start of each turn is draw a hand of four cards from our deck and use those letter cards we've just drawn to make words. Words like example, tutorial, or f You'll see that as we lay these words out, we collect a little bouquet of symbols. Damage hurts the enemy, shields stop us getting hurt, and energy can be used to power up our special abilities on our items and equipment. Play words to whittle down their health bar while preserving yours. Easy! But here's the twist, you have to decide which way to splay your word, and you only gain the symbols of the direction splayed, the others get all covered up with card. And on top of that, the top card of your word will activate its special ability down here for further combo potential, but it'll get removed from your deck for the duration of the combat once used in that way. How structural was that, eh, buddy? Now that you've filled up your deck with all these Weird letters. Now, to help you in your spelling efforts, you have access to a wild card that can fill in as any letter, and an enemy vowel that can be plugged into your word too, both assuring that you've always got opportunities to spell something satisfying. Although I'm actually missing a G and a Y if I wanted to spell the whole word. The enemy you're facing will then retort with their attack, cycling through a bunch of different moves, like the funkiest wrestler at the party. Now, this was the point at which I thought Paveback Adventures might fall down, but don't you worry, it swings and it Hits it out of the park and straight into my collection. Each and every enemy you face has its own unique gimmick or set of new ideas that mean you have to constantly vary your strategy across the course of a run, making those enemies' strategies as compelling as your own. There's not actually that many strings for the designers to pull on here. You've got these purple hexes, these golden boons, health and the thing that tracks what action they're going to take next, but by keeping these resources vague, they can pull on what they mean in all sorts of interesting ways. Hexes representing getting covered in sludge, the wily ways of this charming man, or getting shrunk down by a mad scientist. And the amount of variety in all of these different monsters you'll be facing is only matched by the amount of variety that you have in approaching this puzzle with your own strategy. After each fight, you'll gain items for active bonuses and MacGuffins for more weighty passive bonuses. Maybe this heart will increase your hand size and you can combine it with a musket to do some really spicy damage if you're playing big, long words. But you can also upgrade the individual letters in your deck, making your P's pack more punch and your Q's pack more... quench. For all of its bells and whistles though, the core excitement in Paperback Adventures is always your deck, it's always these letters, it's always the words that you can spell with them. 
Cards are rarely added to your deck in this game. They're more often manipulated, changed, upgraded, or replaced. So every time you're adding or changing or replacing or manipulating a letter, you're thinking about what words you can spell with your current deck. If you remove that M, that means you can't spell menu anymore. And that's a really good word for you for whatever reason. Do you see what I'm saying? And when you're playing with a friend, that excitement compounds till you're sat giggling around the table because you've developed the perfect lunch strat or something similar. <laughs> Chat chat saying four. Yeah, we could try four. <laughs> four. <laughs> That's great. That was a very good word. And you may have noticed in this video, just maybe, that Paperback Adventures has a digital implementation, a lightly simplified version of the physical game that I'd recommend to people who prefer consuming their media on the computer. If you look at Paperback Adventures and think, why is this not just a video game? Well, it is, and you can consume it like that just as readily as you can own it as a physical object. It's entirely a matter of personal preference. Though I would say in its favour that the digital version is better tutorialized and also doesn't have game trade in it. Seriously, these are a component I'm yet to enjoy anywhere. The perfect piece of plastic for people who enjoy the sound of Production issues aside, I think that Paperback Adventures, digital or physical, is an absolutely fantastic design from the creators Sky Larson and Tim Fowers. One to absolutely look out for if you like word games and if you like solo games. And if you want to learn more, you should watch this great video from e and &E of No Pun Included. Elaine and Euphrates. So what's next up? Behind the curtain! I, I was gonna think of a different joke, um, but I, I just couldn't. So it's, it's the same joke again. Uh, what's behind the curtain? It's Lark. It's a puzzle game. Our second star of the show today is Locke, a tiny little puzzle game from designer Blaz Urban Gretzar. This is not a board game, this is not a card game, it's not a mega game or a micro game, it's a tiny little A5 notebook with a series of puzzles inside of it that you will solve with a pencil and an eraser. The form that each of these puzzles take is a grid of blocks that are either blank or have letters in them. Your goal for each of these puzzles is simply to pencil in each of the blocks, and once the whole set is filled in, you finish the puzzle and move on to the next. And if you want to avoid a very minor spoiler here, then here's the top line. This is cosy, it's thinky, it's robust, and it's just a little bit strange. You can go and buy a physical copy for just 13 of your hard-earned bucks, or pay what you want for the PDF version, or play the digital demo on Steam. More on that later. So, to start filling in these boxes in these puzzles, you need to play by a few very simple rules. The first of which is that if you can spell out the word lock, L-O-K, then you can fill in not only all of those blocks, but an additional one as well. And filled in blocks don't actually count when trying to spell out words. So you could have look and then use a lock somewhere else to get rid of one of the O's so you have a lock and which you can then cross out to fill out something else. The game then continues to drip these rules in. T-L-A-K, Talak, can be filled in for a unique effect. Ta can be used for its unique effect. And the puzzles ramp in complexity until you're using all kinds of keywords to solve increasingly dense clumps of letters. Where erasing select letters will create those keywords to daisy chain a solution together. But the thing that I think is really interesting here is that Locke doesn't actually teach you many of its rules. There'll be a slim bit of text at the start of each chapter, which normally introduces a new word, but you have to make logical leaps as to the way those rules work with what you already know. So, for example, that earlier mechanic that spaces that are filled in don't count for adjacency. That's not something the game tells you explicitly, you have to infer that rule because the puzzle can't be solved any other way. Now that might sound a little counterintuitive. In fact, it kind of annoyed me at first, but the more that I played Locke, the more I came to appreciate that this way of doing things is a very smart shortcut to those aha moments that you love in puzzle games. You don't just have to find the solution to these puzzles, you have to find the mechanics as well. Locke is very clever at tutorializing this kind of process as well. The designs of the puzzles to be solved or not solved explain the rules organically. I've not seen something really do this before, and for that, I think it's interesting enough to take a look at. But what I really value Locke for is something that sat in exactly this spot over the past few weeks. 
It's something that I can dip into whilst eating my toast in the morning, a pleasing ritual of hatching these boxes and coming up with new notations of how to solve these increasingly cryptic puzzles. It softly surprises as well, with its gradually ascending curve of difficulty that lets you get comfortable with the keyword before shifting the stakes. I don't actually have much more to say about Locke, really, and I feel bad that it's gotten a shorter section than the other two games in this list, but maybe that's just a testament to how good it is. And in what is becoming a running theme in this video, Locke will also be available as a digital implementation. Currently just a demo, but a really full-featured and rich demo. The work done on the sound and animation and visuals of this thing, oh, it's lovely, it's so satisfying to play, so tactile. I really like this, a great way to check out the game. What's the final thing behind the curtain? Who knows? It's a phone. Wait, you can't see... You can't see anything, can you? Have I got this wrong every time? Not Words is a mobile game that will never leave my phone. It's my constant companion on the bus, on the train, on the sofa, in the morning, in the evening. It's a game that fills any spare moment when I'm on my ones and need something to do. And this game is so out of the remit of Shut Up and Sit Down, but it's so special that I want to talk about it wherever it'll get the most eyeballs. Ava and I talked about Not Words on a podcast back in May of last year, where I thought my coverage would start and end, but I'm still playing it and it might be my favourite word game. Here's how it works. Each puzzle of Not Words, much like Locke, presents you with a mess of mostly empty white squares. This tangle is divided into smaller clusters, with a small list of letters at the top. Those are the possible and only letters that can slot into that cluster, though you don't know where they go within it. To solve the puzzle, you'll have to fill in every square so that, horizontally and vertically, the whole grid is filled with complete words. What emerges here, though, is kind of a halfway house between a crossword and a logic puzzle where your internal word database has to mesh with these ideas and understanding of structure, how vowels glue words together and they cinch shut at the roots. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Not words is such an apt name because, of course, the words are all tangled up in each other. A big knot! But this extends to the whole game, the motions of which are often about finding a spare thread on which you can pull to untangle the whole thing. It's about prizing open the puzzle from such slight beginnings, finding your way in and unspooling, gradually unpicking a solution. Sometimes the words just leap out at you. They were already fully formed deep in the thesaurus of your brain. But more often than not, you need to take a sort of cautious approach. You need to build the feet of the statue first. You need to create pitons in a wall of words. Now, your Not Words is delivered in a few different forms. There's a daily classic, a daily mini, and a twist puzzle that come out every day to solve, ascending in difficulty across the week. Even though I am a fiend for this game in my spare moments, I never manage to keep up with this. Mostly I'm content just dabbling with the monthly puzzle books. 30 puzzles delivered in a big chunk for you to slowly work through over the course of the month, with a few special puzzles dabbled in there where secret words are hidden within the grid. Maybe this one's themed around animals or foodstuffs or body parts. You fly through the first few, but the later ones you'll likely lose patience with and return to over two, three, maybe even four sessions, each time chiseling away at the sculpture. A particularly easy puzzle can take 30 seconds, but a really challenging one at the end of that puzzle book can take up to 30 minutes. And my goodness, it feels so satisfying returning to a puzzle after time has passed, finding the end of the sellotape so you can pick at it and get the whole thing rolling again. And that feeling of sprinting through a puzzle, that's the juice of Not Words that has me coming back. There's a very real mastery of these systems, hidden in the little tricks you learn along the way. A unique challenge to solve only by understanding it as both a words puzzle and a logic puzzle. And one that's delightful to play in a slightly competitive mode with a friend or partner. And all of this is not to mention the fantastic, slicked back, timeless presentation that also features this rabbit that just goes absolutely bug nuts when you win. Crosswords might still, fundamentally, be a better puzzle for people who have bigger brains, people who are smarter than I with more extensive vocabularies. 
But in not words, you'll never fail because you don't know a really specific and irritating word. You can plug the letters in in any order and hopefully it will come together by the end. And I think that's kind of what makes it special. It's that collision between words and logic that make it like one of the truly great new puzzles, an entirely original game that just feels timeless and classic and something really special. And this has been a bit of a rambly short segment on Not Words, but hopefully my passion for it is clear. Get this on your little mobile phone or your desktop device. It's just fantastic. It's so good. I love Not Words. And that is the end of this three word games video. A little quick, quick turnaround, rapid style, rough and tumble video for you folks at home. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had a good time. We'll, we'll do another normal one soon. We've got some good little game, little game videos cooking. If you want to learn more about what the site is up to and what kind of videos you can be expecting, check out our monthly post on the website. We put one out once a month detailing the schedule, what's been going on. We're having a little bit of a slow period at the start of this year because everyone seems to be moving house. I've finished my move, Matt's doing his, he's got to clean up a load of green dust. You can hear about that in the newsletter. We send them out monthly to our subscribers who back us on Patreon. And also you can check out the Twitch streams. We're doing them pretty much every Tuesday now. The For The King stream went up on the channel the other day, but we do all kinds of things over there. Most Tuesdays, they've been a bit spotty so far because we've had things going on, but most Tuesdays you can expect a fun game in the evening with probably me. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you next time. Bye.